This is an overview of the equity method of accounting for investments. So learning objective from chapter one is describe in general the various methods of accounting for an investment in equity shares of another company. Accounting for investments in corporate equity securities. GAAP recognizes three ways to report the investment of other companies. The first way is fair value method. Second way is consolidation of financial statements. And the third way is the equity method. The method selected depends on the degree of influence the investor has over the investee. When to use fair value method. You should use fair value method of accounting if, you, if the investor holds less than 20% of the outstanding stock. So 20% of the equity securities of the investee. The investor cannot significantly affect investees' operations and investments is made in anticipation of dividends or market appreciation. So all of us invest in our retirement plans um, and we probably own less than 20% of the equity security and the whole main idea of this investment is to gain div dividends or that the stock market price goes up. But we can't influence decisions inside the business, so this type of investment that we would be holding would be considered for fair value method. The fair value method, investments in equity securities, when neither significant influence or control exists, are recorded at cost and subsequently adjusted to fair value. So we purchased it for $100. At the end of the year, it's worth $110. We would mark it up to fair value. If you can't determine the fair value, it would remain at cost. These types of fair value accounting methods, investments are classified as trading securities, which means they are held for the short term and unrealized gains or losses are included in earnings. So the whole idea of holding this is to get dividends or may or have market appreciation of the stock. And so you would report unrealized gains or losses. So the mark up or down to fair value in earnings. Fair value method of accounting. Equity securities are not classified as trading securities or are classified that are not classified as trading are classified as available for sale and also reported at fair value. On this one, the difference is, is that the unrealized holding gains and losses are excluded from earnings and reported in a separate component of shareholders' equity as a part of other comprehensive income. So if it's a trading security, then it is classified earnings are in, are, um, gains and losses are reported in earnings. If it is available for sale securities, then it's reported as part of other comprehensive income. Dividends received are recognized as income for both trading securities and available for sale securities. So basically you would just receive dividend income. It would be cash, debit, credit, dividend income for the fair value method. FASB ASC Topic 825 Financial Instruments allows a special fair value reporting option for available for sale securities. Although the balance sheet amounts of these investments remain at fair value under both options, changes in the fair value over time are recognized in the income statement as opposed to the comp other comprehensive income as they occur. So this is all about where you're reporting earnings. It doesn't change the fact that you're using fair value method. When to use a consolidated consolidation of financial statements. This is used when an investor owns Ownership exceeds 50% of the organization's outstanding voting stock, except when control does not rest with the majority investor. We'll talk about what defines control. One set of financial statements is prepared to consolidate all of the accounts of the parent company and all of its controlled subsidiaries as a single entity. So basically, if you have the ability to exercise control, then you're controlling the financial situation of this, and it should be consolidated. It's a theory behind this. To, the to one financial statement to represent the entire entity. FASB ASC Section 810.10.05 Variable Interest Entities including, includes entities controlled through special contractual arrangements, not through voting stock. Intended to com combat the misuse of special purpose entities, if you guys remember looking into Enron, they had spe special purpose entities and they basically did off balance sheet financing. Um, and they kept large assets and liabilities off the balance sheet. So 
if you're controlling through a contract and not through stock, that doesn't change the fact that you're controlling and therefore you'd have to consolidate these entities. Now the equity method. You use the equity method when the investor has the ability to exercise significant influence over the investee's operations. Whether influence is applied or not, you don't actually have to influence the company, but it's your ability to do so. Generally, it is used when ownership is between 20 and 50. So the first one, fair value, is under 20. The second one, consolidation, over 50. And this one's the in-between. You would use the equity method. Significant influence might be present with much lower ownership percentages. If that was the case, then under the equity method, the investor's share of the investee's dividends declared are recorded as decreases in the investment account, not income. Now, there are International Standard 28 in, in the investment associations. The IASB, or ISB, is similar to FASB. It defines significant influence as the power to participate in the financial and operating policy decisions of the investee, but, is, but it is not controlled or joint control over these policies. If an investor has 20% or more ownership, it is presumed to have significant influence unless it's demonstrated not to be the case. So if in these problems, if they say the investor owns 20% or 30% or 40%, we're going to assume that they have significant influence. The investor holds less than 20%, it is presumed that they don't have significant influence unless you can clearly demonstrate that they do. So identify the sole criterion for applying the equity method of accounting and guidance in assessing whether the criterion is met. So according to FASB AS, C, topic 323, representation on the investee's board of directors, participation in investee's policy making process, material intra entity transactions. So, is there a lot between the company and the company you have influence over? In interchange of managerial personnel, technology dependency, or other investee ownership percentages. Limitations of the equity method. So the equity method is not appropriate for investments that demonstrate any of the following characteristics regardless of the investee's degree of ownership. An agreement exists between investor and investee by which the investor su surrenders significant rights as a shareholder. This would be control. A concentration of ownership operates the investee without regard for the views of the investor. And the investor attempts but fails to obtain representation on the board. For some investments that either fall short of the or exceed the 20 to 50 percent ownership, the equity method is appropriate for financial reporting. Conditions can exist where there is where the equity method is appropriate despite majority ownership. If the non-controlling rights are so restrictive as to call into question whether control rests with the majority owner, the equity method is employed for financial reporting rather than consolidation. Basically, if you can't exercise control then you wouldn't use consolidated financial methods. So here's a little summary. Um, this chart is also in your book. I would definitely make a copy of it. It gives you a little if inability to, in, to significant in influence, normal ownership level is less than 20% and you use fair value or cost if you can't use fair value. Ability to significantly influence or control through voting interest uh, ability to significantly influence 20 to 50 percent equity method or fair value if you don't meet the criteria. And then control through voting interest or more than 50 percent consolidated financial statements. Control through variable interest, governance documents, contracts, etc. Primary beneficiary status. No ownership is required actually. You would still need to consolidate the financial statements. Accounting for an investment using the equity method. The investor increases the investment account as the investee earns and reports income. So we'll put onto the books, if we're the investor, we would write in investment in subsidiary. And then as they earn income or pay dividends, we would mark the investment account up or down based on our portion of ownership of that amount. The investor decreases its investment account for cash dividends. When the investee declares cash dividends, its owner's equity decreases. So fair value versus equity. So 
the equity in investment income is 20% of the current year reported by Little Company. The company, the amount of the investment under the equity method is the original cost plus income less dividends. So for 2014, an example, there's $230,000 reported balance is the $200,000 plus the cost uh, $200,000 cost plus $40,000 in equity income, less $10,000 worth of dividends. So they earned income in 2014 of 200000 They declared dividends of 50000 If influence is not significant and it's considered unavailable for sale security, they would recognize $10,000 worth of dividend income and they would carry the amount of $235,000. we will go over this some more. Um, it's easier to see it done out in Excel, so I'm not going to read through this entire problem. Prepare basic equity journal, method journal entries for an investor and describe the financial reporting for an equity method investment. Okay. Assume that big company owns 20% of little company purchased on January 4, 1, 2014 for $200,000. Little then reports net income of 200000 300000 and 400000 respectively, in the next three years. And clear, this is the exact same problem, but we'll walk through it. Declares dividends of 50, 100, and 200000 Okay. So big company records the following. So they record the 20% of the income. So they earned 200000 It increases the investment account, and you credit equity in investee income. Then the dividend, you have a dividend receivable because they declared it, and it reduces the investment account to record the dividend. And then when you receive the dividend, you take in cash and you let go of the receivable. Allocate the cost of an equity method investment and compute amortization expense to match revenue expense revenues recognized from the investee to the excess of investor cost over investee book value. Okay, so fair values of in specific investing assets and liabilities can differ from their book values. Excess payments can be directly identified to those fair values. For example, if your company owns a building, um, then it may be worth more than it's on the books for. So when you buy into that company for stock, you may be willing to pay more because you understand that the book value of the company is less than the fair value. If purchase price exceeds fair value, future benefits are expected to accrue from the investment due to estimated profitability of the investee or the relationship established between the two companies. The additional payment will be attributed to the intangible asset referred to as goodwill. If we have no specific assets to um, relate our overpayment for, then it's considered goodwill rather than any specific asset or liability. Assume Grande Company is negotiating the acquisition of a 30% outstanding shares of Chico Company. Chico's balance sheet reports assets of 500,000, liabilities of 300,000, and a net book value of 200,000. After investigation, they determine that the equipment is undervalued in the, in the company's financial by 60,000, and one of its patents is also undervalued by 40,000. By adding these fair valuation adjustments, Chico's book value, Grande re re arrives at an estimated worth of 300000 So you have a book value of two hundred, and then you have two assets that are undervalued, so you're going to add to that. That's how we get 300000 Based on this, Grande would be willing to pay 125000 or 30% of 300000 When purchase price is more than book value of an investment, the difference must be identified. Assets may be undervalued on the investee's book because fair values of some assets and liabilities are different than their book values, for example, a building, or the investor may be willing to pay extra because of some other future benefit to accrue from the investment, goodwill. So, payment by the investor, so that now they're going to pay 125000 for this. Percentage of book value acquired, so the book value was 200000 and they required 30% of that. So that's really, the book value was 60000 So they paid 65000 subtract that, of book, in excess of book value. So now we're going to identify specific assets. So um, the equipment, 
was sixty thousand dollars undervalued times thirty percent, which is eighteen thousand. A patent forty thousand times the ownership percentage twelve thousand for thirty thousand. So therefore, you overpaid by sixty five thousand. Thirty thousand was attributed to assets. The difference is goodwill. Any extra payment that cannot be contributed attributed to a specific asset or liability is assigned to an intangible asset called goodwill. We do not depreciate goodwill. We check for impairment. The amortization. Patent relating, uh, payment relating to each asset except land and goodwill or other indefinite life to intangible should be amortized over the appropriate period. So if you have equipment and you had $18,000 of your overpayment and it had 10 years left, you would divide the 18,000, this is all straight line, divided by 10. Each year you're going to amortize part of that equipment, which would be $1,800 for 10 years. The patent has five years left. It, you overpaid $12,000 for this, so you divide, and your amortization is $2,400. Goodwill is $35,000. It doesn't have a, an end life, so you're not going to amortize. So your annual amortization expense will be $4,200. Don't worry. We're going to do a bunch of these examples. Goodwill associated with the equity method of investments, for the most part, is measured in the same manner as goodwill arising from a business combination. Tested for declines in value and impairment, goodwill implicit in equity investments is not. So, understand the financial reporting consequences. A change to the equity investment, investee other comprehensive income, losses, and the sale of an equity method. I'm actually going to stop here in the video, and then we'll review the changes after.